welcome back to the episode 7 of the Daniel Smith Colour Showdown. Today is going to be a special triple showdown episode where we compare three colours together instead of the usual two. Many of you have asked for a comparison between the quinacridone burnt orange and the burnt sienna and I was really happy to do that for you guys however I was in the process of deciding for myself whether I wanted Queen Acrodome burnt orange or the transparent red oxide from my own palette I've had Queen Acrodome burnt orange on my palette but I wasn't quite happy with it I did get the Queen Acrodome burnt orange at the same time as I got Queen Acrodome gold and been using it together but I haven't been quite happy with the burnt orange and when I was researching into how to neutralize the ultramarine blue properly I read on handprint.com that the transparent red oxide or anything with it the PR101 was a good neutralizer and so I wanted to compare these two you guys wanted to compare these two to start off with i wasn't sure about breaking the format of the series of you know just comparing the two colors however these three are so similar and it didn't make sense to me to make two separate videos on this when we could just do it all in one go so that's what we are going to do today so the video is going to be a little bit longer because we do have the extra third color but i hope this is going to be useful for you so let's take a closer look at each of these colors and then we'll come back and compare the three together first up is the quinacridone burnt orange and this is a very popular color from daniel smith and it is quite often used alongside quinacridone gold because the quinacridone gold is actually made out of this quinacridone burnt orange mixed in with the nickel azo yellow. Quinacridone burnt orange is made out of PO48 which is quinacridone orange and Jackson's website says quinacridone burnt orange is a warm brown orange hue. Quinacridones are the brightest boldest colour modern technology can offer. All quinacridone colours excel in clarity, intensity, durability and transparency. Quinacridone burnt orange produces effective sky washes when added to a grey blue mix or mossy landscape when combined with sap green. It is classified as excellent in light fastness. It is transparent, granulating and low staining. Next up is burnt sienna and burnt sienna as we all know is a very popular colour in watercolour. It is a series one colour and it is made out of PBR7 which is your natural iron oxide. Jackson says burnt sienna is a grade orange colour. This product can be combined with other hues without a loss of transparency and it is therefore ideal for adding glazes. It is classified as excellent in light fastness, semi-transparent, granulating and non-staining. Burnt Sienna is often used to neutralize ultramarine blue and in fact the famous Jane's Grey is made out of the ultramarine blue and Burnt Sienna by Daniel Smith. Next up is Transparent Red Oxide and again this is a series 1 colour in Daniel Smith and it is made out of PR101 which is a calcinated synthetic red iron oxide. Jackson says on their website, transparent red oxide is a highly transparent burnt orange with undertones of cinnamon and tobacco. A warm and non-staining hue, transparent red oxide makes an exquisite glaze when painted over French ochre for a fiery glow. It is classified as excellent in light fastness, transparent, granulating and non-staining. We are back and the paints have dried. This is quinacridone burnt orange, this is burnt sienna and this is transparent red oxide. From taking a quick look I can tell that the quinacridone burnt orange is the orangiest out of the three. It is a much more intense colour than the burnt sienna 
or the transparent red oxide. I would say that the burnt sienna and the transparent red oxide are closer to each other than the quinacridone burnt orange is to the other two. Let's take a closer look at each of the colours. Here are the washes all together. Again, this is quinacridone burnt orange, this is burnt sienna and this is transparent red oxide. They all do a fantastic job of creating nice even washes. However, I can see that the burnt sienna and transparent red oxide will granulate, whereas the quinacridone burnt orange is nice and smooth with no granulation. So the first difference between the quinacridone burnt orange and either the burnt sienna or the transparent red oxide is the granulation. I'd say all three colours do a great job on all the different papers. So this is hot press paper, this is rough and this is archers and it's the same over here. The thing that I do notice though is that burnt sienna seem to be more prone to the cauliflowering or the blooming than the other two colours. Now in terms of opacity and lifting and glazing and all that, this is quinacto burnt orange, this is the burnt sienna and this is the transparent red oxide. In terms of the transparency, I would say that the quinacridone burnt orange and the transparent red oxide is very transparent, whereas I can see some deposit on the burnt sienna. So I would probably put this down as a semi-transparent. In terms of lifting, the burnt sienna was the easiest to lift, followed by the transparent red oxide. The transparent red oxide was easy to lift, however, the granulation tend to stay in the pits of the paper and wouldn't lift, whereas with the burnt sienna, the granulation lifted quite easily as well. The hardest one to lift is the quinacridone burnt orange as it's a quite highly staining colour. In terms of glazing, I think all three glazes quite well. With the granulating colours of the burnt sienna and the transparent red oxide, the granulation gets stronger as you layer more glazes on top. The quinacridone burnt orange it provides a smooth glaze over its previous layer and the burnt orange was the easiest to glaze with minimal lifting from the previous layer whereas I think if I had to pick between these two then the burnt sienna was fraction more slightly more easier for the previous layer to come up so I would say that if you had to do multiple layers of glazes, you might start getting into problems with burnt sienna first, followed by the transparent red oxide. And with most quinacridones, you can layer till the cows come home and they're quite happy to just let you do that. In terms of the gores, the quinacridone burnt orange, because it's not a granulating color, does the more textured, more subtle textured look whereas the very granulating burnt sienna and transparent red oxide will create a very strong linear feature. I would say that the transparent red oxide creates a much brighter, much more bold linear patterns, whereas the burnt sienna has a slightly softer lines to them. Because we had so much fun with salt, in the previous episodes I thought I would do the same here and I think the burnt sienna had the most interesting texture and it had the biggest reaction. I was surprised with the transparent red oxide that you didn't get as much texturing happening as this here happens with the red iron ox um, with the burnt sienna. On to comparing how the three colours mix with other colours, I have had questions about how I mix these colours and in particular whether I mix equal parts of the two colours together or not. And the answer is I don't because some colours are so strong in its tinting strength that if I did equal parts you would just 
have almost the same color all over such as colors like Perini maroon it's so strong on its own if i did half and half with other colors it would just be Perini maroon with like a slight minor difference so what i do instead is i just mix a ratio that looks good for each color so that you can get an idea on how that color that we're looking at influences the other colors going back to the three colors this is quinacridone burnt orange this is burnt sienna and this is transparent red oxide me personally i'm immediately drawn to the colors that the transparent red oxide created it seems much clearer and brighter than the other two colors and with the transparent red oxide it created the biggest numbers of clean nice looking colors whereas with the quinacridone burnt orange and the burnt sienna there are a few colors that aren't as bright and clear now one of the very useful thing about watercolors of this kind of hue is that it's good at neutralizing the ultramarine blue and this is where the ultramarine blue is in my chart so in terms of hue i think they're all good at neutralizing ultramarine blue however in terms of texture there's actually quite a bit of difference so i'm gonna just bring the camera down closer so you can have a better look as before this is quinacridone burnt orange this is burnt sienna and this is the transparent red oxide as you can see with the quinacridone burnt orange and to some extent the burnt sienna the two colors do neutralize each other however they tend to separate quite a bit on the paper so here it is neutralized color at a distance but if you get closer you can see that the ultramarine blue has sunk into the pits of the paper whereas the orange has stayed on top and as i said before to some extent that is also true for the burnt sienna however when it comes to the transparent red oxide it has a much smoother look so if you're looking for a color that neutralizes ultramarine blue with, with a smoother texture then i would say that the transparent red oxide is great whereas if you're looking for a color that neutralizes blue but in a really interesting textured way then the quinacridone burnt orange might be the better choice in terms of how the colors mix with other colors i think all three are really interesting the greens that the quinacridone burnt orange and the burnt sienna make a nice and mossy color whereas with the transparent red oxide it is a much brighter cleaner color it also creates lovely yellows and reds but i have to say my favorite is when you mix the quinacridone rose with the transparent red oxide i think that is a very beautiful soft classy rosy color i also really like how it interacts with the quinacridone gold and create this really bright like a daisy orange in conclusion how would i pick between these three colors well the biggest difference is obviously that the quinacridone burnt orange is non-granulating whereas the burnt sienna and the transparent red oxide is so that will be one of the biggest keys to picking between the transparent red oxide and these other colors Another factor that you might consider for your palette is its staining levels and the burnt sienna is the easiest to lift followed by the transparent red oxide. The quinacridone orange as with most quinacridone colors is the hardest one to lift. The flip side of that is that the quinacridone burnt orange will layer till the calves come home whereas it is a little bit more harder to layer the burnt sienna and perhaps the transparent red oxide because they like to lift a little bit more another factor if you're into gauzing is the texture that these colors create and because quinacridone burnt orange isn't granulating it creates a much subtler texture whereas if you want a more linear texture you should go for the burnt sienna 
or the transparent red oxide. In terms of colour mixes, all three are great at neutralising ultramarine blue, so there's no problem there. If you're looking for a brighter, cleaner colour mixes, then I would recommend the transparent red oxide. Whereas if you're looking in particular for nice mossy greens, then I would recommend the quinacridone burnt orange. Burnt sienna is a little bit of a middle ground between these two in terms of mixing with other colours. It creates lovely mossy colours that are perhaps a little bit more clearer in the green and blue ranges than the quinacridone orange. Burnt sienna is like the middle kit in between the quinacridone burnt orange and the transparent red oxide. It's a lovely middle ground mixing brown where all the colours you mix with will have this nice earthy tone to them whereas with the quinacridone burnt orange you do get the more toned neutralised colours for the blues and greens however when you mix it with yellows, oranges and red it becomes very very intense. So I would say choosing between these three really really depends on what kind of palette you're putting together and what you are looking for these colours to do for you. Me personally I like bright mixes so I'm going to go with the transparent red oxide for my new palette. Which one would you go for? Would you go for the quinacridone burnt orange, the burnt sienna or the transparent red oxide? Let me know in the comments down below and why you think that one is the best for you. Also if you do already use these colours in your palette please let us know how you use it within your art form if you have any questions please ask away in the comments down below if this video was interesting and useful to you please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to this channel then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon as well thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next one